you have plans for your future, right? Ed, I know, has already made plans. Alan, he's, he's made a few plans. He's still making plans. If you have not yet made a plan, you need to make it. And God has something bigger than you could ever dream for yourself. That's not my topic today. I want to talk about the divine kiss. How many of you like to kiss? Just kiss on the cheek. Oh, my wife is giving me that eyeball. That says I better change the subject. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm not talking about that kiss that makes you fall off your feet. Well, I am. But I'm talking about the kiss from God. Psalms 85, verse 10. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. So if we have uh, kissed, are you righteousness or are you peace? And am I righteousness or am I peace? I guess we've never kissed <laughs> because I'm neither one. In this scripture, uh, the psalmist, the writer gives us the idea of uh, some really uh, opposites of this. Mercy and grace of God are, are meet together. And when that happens, it requires righteousness and judgment and they come together with a divine kiss mercy and truth are met together righteousness and peace have kissed each other hmm We try to be uh, what other people think I am. Now, just in your mind, don't speak it out. But what do you think about me as a pastor? What am I supposed to be? You got it? You got that thought in your brain, right? No? What's a pastor supposed to be like? Think about it. He smiles all the time. Right? Oh, good, good, good answer. So therefore, I try to... Smile all the time. But sometimes you catch me with a, I mean, no. You 
You're not supposed to say amen. Just keep it to yourself. Uh, God knows our innermost parts. And uh, when we're saved, God gives us that uh, innate uh, uh, desire to please him. Let me say that again. When you are saved, God puts inside of you and inside of your brain and in your heart <laughs> that uh, the word I, I use as a hearing person is a innate, I don't know if I say it right. Oh, it's a natural. The natural desire to please him. Yesterday or the day before we were sitting in the living room, we have two uh, chairs and one love seat. I always go and I sit in this one, in the love seat, waiting for my wife to come and sit with me. But uh, she always sits in another chair over there. And I was coming in the house, and Chris, my son, was there, and he started to sit down in that chair. And then he moved, or on, on the sofa, and he moved to the chair over there. I said, You can sit there, I'll sit here. He said, well, you always sit here, you like that. I said, well, the reason why I sit on the sofa is because my wife likes that reclining chair, and she sits there, and that's my favorite too. But it's my innate desire to please her. Is that not your desire, David? Ah, uh, well, don't answer. Your wife is watching. That should be our desires to please the husband or to please the wife. And when we are saved, that becomes my normal. The norm for me is to please God. We get up in the morning, we comb our hair, brush our teeth. Well, some of us do. Uh, to make myself look good enough to please her. Yeah? That's a true sense of real reality and... Uh, Honesty in our lives, and if we want, well, I hope you want to please God. I hope you want to please God. Mercy and truth meet, and if righteousness and peace kiss each other, That means that righteousness and peace have been separated. And mercy and truth, they meet. It means they have been separated. Now, I have met with you this morning, but I've not seen you since... Last Sunday. Well, okay, for some of you it's been five weeks, but no. You see? Righteousness and peace, if they can, means they've been separated. Oh. I think some of us have become separated from righteousness. Some of us have become separated from peace. That meeting is made possible 
through Jesus Christ. In John 1, 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The gulf between me and God, you and God, is so vast that we cannot make that connection by ourselves. But God in His mercy uh, and truth joined it. God is merciful. But to have mercy, we must have uh, the proper grounds. Mercy cannot, mercy will not grieve the holy nature of a judging God. Therefore, I cannot experience mercy without righteousness. You get the picture? If my life uh, is not righteous, I will not please Him. Salvation is not free. Salvation, Jesus gave his life for you and I. He paid that price. When we sin, God, your mercies, come on. No. Let me get rid of this. I have a pain in the jacket that's binding it. New Year gave me a s stiff neck. When we sin, it is not my right to say, your mercies are going to forgive me. No, 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 no. Or when we get in trouble and financial headaches and whatever. God, have mercy on me. Well, God does have mercy on us, yes, for sure. But my proper response is God, forgive me. And then have mercy on me. David said that. Forgive me, God. Have mercy on me. At the cross... Jesus on that cross, that God changes sin to become mercy to us. Proverbs 16, 6 says, But mercy and truth, oh, by, by, by mercy and truth, Iniquity is purged. By fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You see, it's by His mercy, His truth, that my iniquity is purged. The, the, the divine meeting 
in your life is not a once-in-the-past meeting. But it should be a daily reality in my life. My meeting with Christ needs to become a daily meeting. When I, I, I was dating, I couldn't wait to be with my girlfriend. I couldn't wait to call her the old-fashioned way. Our walk must be in truth and righteousness. If I do not have truth and righteousness, then my life is a sham. Our walk must be in with uh, mercy and peace. If I do not have mercy and peace, then I will receive death, the punishment. <laughs> there has to be more. Um, and, and in the church uh, today, many places... There, there is the tendency, and it, it happens even in this church. As a pastor, sometimes I tend to overlook or disregard. And I, I don't mean that disregard, you know. But I, I mean, I, I just... Uh, when people come to church and do not live according to this word. It's hard to confront individuals. But there are people who do that. And, and they, they have uh, made it uh, a habit. Christianity light. You know about light beer? You seen the can that says, she doesn't want to talk about that. Light beer. I don't know what it means. Maybe the color's light. Oh, maybe I, I better should have used a diet soda. Oh, well, I didn't think about that one. Christianity is a light responsibility. It's a light righteousness. We, we, we have, um, it makes us a, a feel-good gospel. And we deny sin. Uh, they just it's a dysfunction in their life. It's their fault, not mine. The gospel of truth and righteousness recognize the hopelessness of you and I. Truth and righteousness recognizes the ugliness of sin. And we have made sin so vague, vague. But the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But then the Bible says, and it provides us with a remedy 
to that problem. Proverbs 3, 3 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about your neck. Write them on the table in thine heart. Yeah. We eagerly accept God's grace and his mercy. But we're not so in a hurry to accept God's righteous demands. Yeah. We depart from them sometimes. But God is calling for a church without spot or wrinkle. I didn't iron this this morning. Without any form of sin in my life. That's the church that will be raptured. The scripture says there are multitudes who choose that broad way. And there are few that choose the narrow, straight way. Few enter in to the kingdom of God. Therefore, I'm on guard every day, making sure my sins are forgiven, that I might enter in with Him. I want God's peace. But I don't want to have to <laughs> labor to enter into the promised land. I have to labor to enter into the promised land? You better read your Bible. In, in, Pastor Linda was telling me this week that um, people need to read, well, Ed said it last Sunday and uh, he, he said that we need to read our Bibles more. Pastor Linda was talking to me this week and said, you know, people need to read, was it Ezekiel chapter 7? Ezekiel chapter 7, when God said, enough it's over I've had enough of Israel's rebellion and God the punishment upon them so she said if you read that and compare it with what's happening today in America the church should be concerned yeah, because it's happening in America the same as in Ezekiel chapter 7. Well, the whole book of Ezekiel, really. But we have to labor to enter in. Hebrews uh, 4, 9. says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he has also ceased from his own works, as did, as, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into rest, or at least any man falls short 
man fall after the same example of unbelief. There is a rest for you and I in God. But we have to cease from what I'm doing right now and begin to do what he wants me to do. You understand, God does, God, God does not withdraw his requirements. His demands are also known as his will. The Lord's Prayer. How many of you know the Lord's Prayer? Oh, good group of you. Awesome. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Oh. You see? His demands are also His will. And we pray that prayer, Thy will be done. Okay, that means God's taken over my life. Mercy and grace met together in our life with righteousness and truth and peace. <laughs> All of those happen when you and I submit and follow God. Yeah. Nothing else will satisfy him because we are bought with a dear price. When we die, in our own desires and wishes, in favor of following God's plan for my life, we are blessed with the divine kiss. You got that? When we die to our own desires, my own ways, in favor Of following God's plan. Hmm. When I stand before the Lord and I give account for what I have done in my life, He will want to know if I followed His plan. He wants to know if I obeyed His commands, yeah. But also, hey, Paul. Imagine if Paul did not follow God's plan, Paul would never have been an apostle. It's not just obeying the commandments of God. We also have to follow his plan instead of mine. Paul said, Lord, <laughs> what will you have me to do? And it was kind of blurred. But then in Psalms 2.12 it says, Kiss the Son. Lest, if I don't kiss Him, there'll be anger and I perish. And His anger's just kindled a little bit. Blessed are they that put their trust in Him. Colossians chapter 1 verse 6 and knew the grace of God 
in truth. You see, it's grace and truth. It's mercy and peace. It's righteousness and truth. Always there's two together. I pray that we might know God's grace, yes. But there has to be the reality in life that I must live for Him every day. I cannot go home tomorrow and curse my children because they broke something. Yeah, it happens. It's an everyday life. Romans 14, 17 and 18. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that is in these serves the Lord and is acceptable to God and approved by man. You see, we are not approved by God or by people unless we have righteousness, peace, joy, and mercy. I think it's a second song, Blake. 